Welcome to People Love Process. I always find it interesting what catches my attention. When my curiosity is piqued, I've learned over the years not to ignore that, but rather act on it. In this movie, I'll showcase a project I worked on for a company. They provided the theme, but I'll show you how we approached it and created a set of artwork for them to use on stickers. This is going to be a fun one, so let's get started. So one day, I had to go to the dentist to get my teeth cleaned. And I show up, I sit in the chair, and they shot me up with Novocaine, and then they left, and I'm just sitting there waiting for it to take effect. And I'm looking around the room, and I see this roll of stickers. I've seen it before, but uh, this time it captured my attention. And whenever I have those little curiosity moments, I try to figure out why. Why is this making me curious? Well, it had a character on it that I thought looked pretty cool. And so I kind of logged that into memory. After I was done getting my teeth clean and I was getting ready to leave, I point at the roll and I look at the dental assistant and I said, hey, could I get one of those stickers? She just looks at me like with her hands on her hips and goes, those are for kids. And I go, give me one of the stickers. She gave me a sticker and I went home. My studio door in my studio has stickers all over it that I collect from friends and people I meet. And I went to put it on the door and I was looking at it and it said smile makers. And that made me curious again, like, well, who are they? And so I look them up and lo and behold, it's a company owned by Warren Buffett and they make stickers and other accoutrements for the dental industry. So dentist offices can give away stickers to kids or adults in this case. And uh, they make that kind of product with certain themes. And I go, well, that's kind of cool. I wonder, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to send them an email and see if I can get in touch with their creative director called the company and she said, well, we don't really give out that information, but if you send a package to uh, uh, address it to this address, attention art director, it'll get to the person you want. And so that's what I did. Just printed out some samples, sent it. Uh, about a week and a half later, I get a call or an email that is, and it goes, Vaughn, we haven't talked in a long time. Lo and behold, it was a friend of mine that I hadn't talked to in years. I'd actually lost contact with them. And this goes before social when there was forums online. That's where I first met him. Well, he's an art director at this company now. And and he said something like, well, we didn't think you'd be interested. I'm going, what? Why wouldn't I be interested? These are cool. And he goes, well, great. Well, from that point forward, We've done stickers for him ever since. And this sticker here was the first set we created for him. And it was all based off of germs. So it was fun coming up with this character. And I want to bring you or take you through the creative process for a set we did, which is themed on pinatas. And they wanted a whole set of pinata themed stickers. And that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to start off with the whole stage of drawing. And this is no more detailed than what I got for the specific theme that we're going to create here, which is a fish theme uh, pinata. So I'm going to select this uh, rough sketch. I'm going to go ahead and set the opacity to 15, lock the layer. And all this comes down to is uh, using basic shapes, such as the elliptical tool, to get all those easy shapes to discern. And then all the other shapes will go ahead and build from it. Some of these shapes, like the fins, we can create those separate, and these are really easy. So let's go ahead and build the one on top because um, we're going to take the pin tool here, and I'll start under this shape like this, and we're just going to go all the way up to where it comes to this. I'm going to click here. I'm not going to worry about the curves at this point. Click here, click here, and we'll go all the way down here, and I'll click here, and we'll close the shape. Well, that's a little strange, you may think. Why'd you do that? Well, because I can take uh, the anchor point tool in Illustrator, pull this out. It'll give me access to the handles. And then all I have to do is adjust the Bezier handles to create the curve in its final form. You don't need to try to do that as you build it. This is an easy way to do it. So here I'll do the same thing just to get access 
Then I'll go ahead and pull these handles out to actually form and shape everything. And to make a shape like this, uh, this is the ideal and easiest way to do it. So with the, uh, the anchor point tool, just grab the path, pull it out till you have access to the handles. Then just adjust those handles to get the overall curve that you need in terms of this case, the, the shape of the fin. We'll do the same thing on this last one here. We'll grab this and I'll pull this out. We'll pull this handle out and you can see how quickly uh, you can create a shape like this uh, in terms of the fins on the artwork. So not hard, just make it simple. And that's the easiest way to make these kind of shapes that are very, um, I don't know, cloud-like, I guess you could say. They just have a lot of curves in them. You wouldn't want to place an anchor point here and here. You're just making it harder for yourself. So take advantage of those bezier handles and uh, create that. It's going to make it go a lot faster. Now, there's other shapes we can create, such as the shape of the head. You know, it's easy to create that shape because this is all we need. Then you can take a circular shape here. And once again, this shape is going to uh, make up the element that's going to form the cheek. And we'll create that last. We're going to use this shape to create other shapes, though. And that is the detail in terms of the mouth. We have all of these shapes. And that's the next thing I want to show you how to create is this is a kind of an odd shape. So I would just find wherever I want the first anchor point to go, maybe right there. And it'd come all the way up here. And as it kind of hits this edge, this is where I'll add the anchor point. And I'm just going to pull it out as I click it. Then I'll go down here to somewhere around here and I'll click this and I'll pull it out. And then we'll go all the way back to this part of the mouth. And I'm going to go ahead and this one I'll go a little further. Then I'll close the shape. Then we'll go back to the anchor point tool again. This where I'll pull out just to get access to the handles. I'll pull this one just to get access to the handles. And I'm purposely showing you how to do this without any use of a plugin. Even though I use a plugin to do this kind of manipulation, uh, this is how you'd natively do it in Illustrator. And so this is all I'm doing to control the top and bottom curves of, well, fish lips. That's what we're creating here. How many, how many times can you say you've seen fish lips built in Illustrator? Well, this might be a first for you. So that's how I create the top one. The same principle applies to the bottom one. And this is where I have smart guides turned on. Command U to toggle it on, Command U to toggle it off. I hover over this, it tells me this is where these, this path we just created intersects with the cheek. So I'll start there, place my first anchor point here. I'll go down to the bottom. And this can either be right here, it doesn't really matter. We'll put it here, pull it out. So I get access to those anchors. Then I go over here, pull this out, and then we'll go back up here and we'll go right about here and we'll close out the path. Then I'll go to the anchor point tool again. I'll pull this out, just to give access to those handles. And I'll pull this out to give access to that handle. And at times you might break this. So notice this is considered a corner anchor point now. And this is what you're going to run into in Illustrator at times. It'll break the, the smooth anchor point, turn it to a corner, in which case just go up here to make smooth, click it, and now it's a smooth one again and behaves like a smooth one the way it should. Um, it's That's one reason why I use a plugin because the plugin... Um, it still will break because that's just the way they coded Illustrator, but it gives a, a assist to fixing that at times, which I think is more intuitive, but that's how you fix it natively in Illustrator. We'll go back to the anchor point tool and we're just going to pull this out just enough to grab the handle like that. And then I'll grab this and notice again, it broke it. So that's something you probably noticed before and wondered why. Well, it's not you doing anything wrong. It's just the way Illustrator is. Click this to restore it to uh, the, the smooth anchor point. Remember, there's only two type of anchor point in Illustrator. There's either smooth or corner. And most of the time on a shape like this, you want to be using smooth, not corner. We'll adjust this. 
to get the lips just the way we want. That looks good. This is where I'll take a copy of the cheek shape, Command C, Command F, just so you can see what I'm doing. I'll make one copy, make another copy, select this fish lip. <laughs> it's just, that just sounds weird, fish lip. And then we're going to go minus front to trim that edge. And we'll take this one and we'll go ahead and minus front to trim that. Now we have both lips. This is where I'll go ahead and create the inside part of the mouth. We'll snap it where those come together here. I'll go back to the anchor point tool, create the shape here. Might move that up a bit like that. Then I'll select the top lip, bottom lip, clone it, Command C, Command F, fill it just so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to go ahead and unite these. If you look at appearance, it'll group it. So we'll make sure it's a compound. And since that's on top of the inside, we'll select both now and we'll go minus front. And you can see how it creates that shape on the inside. Go back to elliptical tool and we're going to give it a tongue. I didn't draw a tongue, but I think it'd look good with a tongue. So we'll select uh, the inner part of the mouth. We'll clone it. Command C, Command F, select this, intersect it to create that element. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to select this shape that makes up the front of the head, select the body. We're going to clone both, Command C, Command F, intersect it. That gives us the head shape. We're going to take this shape now, intersect it with the cheek shape to get the cheek. And now all we have to do is we have to edit uh, with the cheek shape, the lip shape, and this lip shape. And we're going to clone these just so you can see what we're doing. We'll color these like this. We'll unite them. You might have to hit it uh, twice. So I unite it once. Notice these artifacts. If you hit Unite again, it usually resolves that and gets rid of them. That's what we want. And actually, I shouldn't have com combined the cheek. I don't know why I did that. Let's go ahead. Sorry. I kind of goofed up there. Is Oh, you know what? I did. I, 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 I did it right. So that's fine. We're going to just take this and extend it out. See, normally when, I, when I'm working like this, I'm not trying to explain stuff as I'm working. Uh, I get nervous when my cat comes in and starts giving me the evil eye because it wants a snack. And <laughs> I go, get out of here. I'm working. You know, so you guys are the equivalent to um, a cat watching me work. So I'm going to take this, select the front part of the head we created here, and I'm going to go minus front. Why'd I do that? Because I'll go ungroup and I don't want this part. And actually, now that I'm looking at this, let's go ahead and go back because I'm going to take this and I'm going to take this shape and I'm going to make a copy of this shape and a copy of this one we merged. This is where the creative process gets a little wonky. Uh, uh, dirty, that is. And we're going to select both these, unite them together. I'm going to take this body shape minus front. And this is going to look really sloppy now, but I'm going to go uh, ungroup, deselect the back part, all these, just delete. And I did that because all we need is we want these shapes to be separate. That's all I was doing there. And then I can select this, select this shape, minus front, ungroup, deselect what we want to keep and get rid of that. So now we have our artwork set up nicely. I'd do the same thing for, uh, I'd trim, like take these two shapes. I probably should have saved uh, the body shape. This is why I tend to save shapes on layers because I'll forget like I did here. But in this case, we would do the same thing. We just take these two shapes, clone them, fill them so you can see what we're doing, unite them. This is going to work fine. Probably make two copies. Select this. Trim that edge. Select this one. Trim that edge to get all the clean artwork we need that will end up. Um, will end up. I notice I messed that up. Uh, that shouldn't be that way. Um, so there you go. So we're going to take. Uh, I'll, I'll fix that because trust me. Even when I'm not trying to explain things as I'm working. 
I make these kind of mistakes all the time because I might be listening to a podcast or an audio book and, and I'm not paying attention and I do this. So we're just going to fix it. I'd fix it this way, color it so you can see what I'm doing. And I just pull this over, adjust these so they overlap this area like that. And then once I have that, then I can select this, select the body, unite it. Uh, we don't need the fill sample and then we have it fixed. So uh, pay attention while you're working. Don't be like me and get distracted. So when it's all said and done, uh, we have all the base artwork here. So here's the base vector shapes here. I also created all the confetti shapes here. And this is where the fun part starts because this is where we get to start coloring. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn those layers off. We're gonna turn on the tonal family we're gonna use here. And this is where I can just start selecting um, areas of my design and just start, start coloring them. And so I might color the fins. We'll go here, the fins and maybe these lips. We're not going to, if we colored this traditionally like a fish, it'd be kind of gross and, and not very entertaining. This is a pinata. Pinatas are colorful. The whole uh, Mexican culture around pinatas is very colorful. So we want this to be colorful as well. So we're going to color just the fins, uh, this green color. This is the only area this, this is going to show up and color that dark green. Maybe we have the top of the head here. Um, I think we're going to color this a nice pink just so we can see it. Let's go ahead and color the eyes. I think we're going to keep this kind of an orange color. We'll keep this traditional white for the eye like that. And instead of black, we're using a dark blue uh, to be the darkest color. That also be the color of the mouth and then the tongue. What color should we make the tongue? Maybe it's the red color, but we might tint that. And this is why you want to use global colors. So notice this is a global color. So I can go to tongue and I can go make this 60% tint, eh, maybe 65, something like that. That looks fine. Take the chin of the fish and make that orange. We'll take the cheek. Maybe that uh, stays with the kind of this uh, turquoise color, I think looks good. Then we can color the other elements of the body. Maybe this is yellow. Maybe this part of the detail on the body is this color. And let's see, we'll go ahead here. I think we're gonna take this we're going to paste behind this shape like that. So we're going to take this now. I think this, no, that doesn't, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to change my mind. I think I'm going to make this the same kind of, maybe that's a purple. Yeah, that goes good with the yellow. And then we're going to take all these shapes. And I want these a little darker. That looks good. And all these circular shapes. Maybe we make this a pattern by turning these orange. And then maybe we change those. Ooh, that looks good like that. And this goes orange. Maybe this up here is turquoise. And maybe we make this orange. And we color this purple, purple orange and we'll make this that color as well so these are a lot of fun to color especially on a, a pinata like this now when it comes to detailing this is where i'll go back and i'll create shapes like this and then i mentioned this in another movie but i really wish in blend modes if you go to the transparency palette they have all these blend modes and i wish they had add one called shading because it would be great if it would be like a smart fill color and it'd give you controls on value and hue and um, those kind of controls, but it would use math based off of light and how it affects 
when it interacts with certain surfaces of color. That way, as the color goes over colors, it would look correctly on every hue or value of that color. Here, I can mimic that idea by going to multiply, and that doesn't look that doesn't look bad. I think it's too dark. If we go to 45 for the opacity, then now as it goes over the teal, the greens, it works good because this is like a bluish gray color. Uh, when it goes over yellow and the lighter colors of warm colors, because warm doesn't have a lot of blue in it, it'll look okay as it gets closer to values like purple and this red, but on lighter colors, not so well. And that's where they could really improve the process, but um, I've tried to show Adobe that. I've mocked up diagrams showing them this is what I mean. They didn't really get it. And and I think it's because they never work with the software they develop, but man, I'd love that so much. Um, so please, if you're a software developer, you want to make a mint, come up with that, sell it to Adobe, and you'll be set. So I'm going to make a copy of the bottom fins. I'm going to unite these together. I'm going to make sure this is a compound path. I'm going to select this sliver shape now, interact with it by in, uh, uh, intersect it, that is, with Pathfinder to create the two shapes I want. And then these shapes down here, I'm just going to sample with the eyedropper this shading shape. And you can see how it creates that shadow color. We're going to select this. I'm going to clone this shape, select this sliver shape, intersect with Pathfinder, sample the shading. And you can see how adding those elements kind of breaks apart that body and adds a little dimension. Obviously, this isn't uh, detailed and supposed to look like realism, but it adds that kind of uh, kind of depth that really brings interest to a motif like this. We're going to select these paths here, and this is something I do quite a bit, where I'll select a path, color it, and then I'll go to the profile, and I'll go to this profile shape one, and I'll apply a profile. Now, this is really hard to see, so we're going to go to multiply, and we're going to multiply this. Then we're going to zoom in on this, and you can see what it's done there. It's tapered it on both ends, but this isn't big enough. We need to beef it up. It's 0.45, so we're going to go to 1.75, and that looks a lot better, but the value's wrong, so right now it's 100% value. We're going to knock this down to 45% to match what we're doing on the other shading, and I think that looks good. Now, once you've done something like this, you can just drag and drop it into graphic styles. Now you have it saved, so I can just select these other lines, no reason to recreate the, the wheel, and apply this graphic style to them, and you get all that detailing done a lot quicker. So that's how I use graphic styles a lot. Uh, to do that kind of shading. Now, when it's all said and done, the shading of all the elements and shapes, it goes from very flat. This is fine, doesn't look bad, but this looks a whole lot more engaging and a whole lot funner. Add the highlighting in, and it's just over the top, really, really cool. I think this is going to work great. Now, this does have a background. So what I'm going to do is turn on the background. We're going to go ahead and select this. We're going to fill it with the tur uh, turquoise color. And one thing I want to bring turn on is this layer because this is set up on a file where this is the die line the client provided me. The dotted line uh, shows where you don't want any critical information to go beyond that. And the the outside edge is the die cut. So I extend it past that die cut. So when it prints and trims, it's going to look great. Um, this is where confetti comes in. So I kind of fill this in on the shape. But notice I have this shape on the background layer. And I'm going to go ahead and add a stroke to this because what I want to do is create an outer rim of all design of all the whole fish design only not the confetti just the fish so I copied all those shapes and I merged them together using Pathfinder unite now I'm just going to beef it up so let's go to stroke and beef this up because I want this to be quite a bit bigger. We'll go 7.5. I think that looks good. We're going to click round because notice how when it gets down here to the corners, looks kind of wonky and watch how it improves. If you go to round, that looks really nice. I think that's going to work great. We're going to color this fill 
the same teal color, the same outside stroke color, but we're not going to leave it like that. We're going to go to the colors here, make sure we're on stroke, and we're going to change this and we're going to adjust this value to 40% and we'll match it on the fill as well. 40%, even though you can't see that, like that. And I think that looks even better on it. And now that I'm looking at it, I think we can we can improve that. That might it might look even better if we go darker. Like I think if we go to 70%, then it's gonna be a lot more subtle. And I think it's gonna contrast better. Uh, maybe half, maybe go half. This is where I'll experiment quite a bit. And I think that that looks pretty good. You know what? I might go all the way back to what I had. <laughs> this is where I'll vacillate quite a bit and try to figure out what I like better. And sometimes I have to set something aside and come back to it later to figure it out. I think that that looks good. I think in its final format, it'll print uh, fine. Now, the last thing I want to do is something that I liked how this looked, but I wanted it to pop a little more and have a little more dimension to it because pinatas aren't flat. They're usually created with a balloon and then you shape stuff around it. And then you, you cut a hole and you put candy in it and then you, <laughs> you beat it like a dead horse with a baseball bat or whatever uh, to get that uh, candy coming out. So I wanted to kind of, reflect that. So we're going to take a shape once again, based off of the profile of the fish only. I don't want this yellow. Um, I want this to be white. And all we're going to do here is we're going to go to effect. We're going to go to style. We're going to go to inner glow. It'll bring up this menu. And on the inner glow, I want to select a specific color. We'll click on color, click on color swatches. I'm going to go down to, let's see... We might use um, process black, a tint to that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that color. That'll work. And we want multiply and you can see what that does. And now it's all about applying uh, what, we, what setting we want on this. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply 100% because we're gonna control the opacity in its final form outside of the settings of inner glow. I think it works easier. I think we want it bigger. So let's try eight. You wanna make sure it's on edge. And I think that looks good like that. And now I'm gonna go okay. Now I'm going to go to the transparency palette, set multiply, and now I can adjust the value by adjusting uh, uh, the opacity. In this case, I think it's a little too dark. So we're going to do it by half to 50. And look at how it adds a nice kind of almost dimensional aspect to it. If I turn it off, flat, width, it just adds to it. So that's kind of cool. Now when it was all said and done, uh, this is how all the, the various stickers came out for this project. And I'm just going to turn this on. You can see all four of them uh, in this set is a fun project to work on. Whenever I find myself in a mundane or boring situation, I force myself to look at the details of what is around me and see if I can find anything that I didn't notice already. In this movie, it was a roll of stickers I'd looked at many times before, but didn't really pay attention to them. Curiosity is creativity's best friend. So let your imagination run wild. It always leads to good things. If you like this movie, please share a link to my YouTube channel on social media. I really want to thank those who have done that. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe as well. Thank you for watching People of Process. I hope this content helps you improve your own creative process.